Hello, my name is Herman Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party. I'd like to talk today as a response to this, who is presented by RTE as the moderate Islamic imam in Ireland, uh, Umar al Quadri. He calls himself doctor, but I don't know, does he have a doctorate because he only has a master's in Islamic theology? I put up a video about this uh, al Qadri uh, last week. Over a quarter of a million people have seen it. He was obviously very angry about it. Why is that? I put up, without comment, a video of him speaking in O'Connell Street in 2009 where he makes very clear that Islamic terrorist organization Hamas, he calls them his brothers, claiming that Hamas wants peace. Wow, uh, given what's happened. But after that, he said, no, no, he got it all wrong. He then, in 2009, he didn't understand that Hamas was a terrorist, Islamic terrorist organization, maybe what, he, what did he think it was about? Kind of apple pie and cream? And then I questioned aspects. He's put up a story that uh, he was attacked there recently in Dublin, that first he claimed it was a hate crime. And first he said that his wallet was stolen, then his wallet wasn't stolen. And it's all confused. Uh, the story keeps on changing. The con man imam can't even get the basics right of where he's born. In some places, he says he's born in Pakistan, and then others, he's born in Europe. Born and raised in Europe or born in Pakistan? Which one is it? He has moved from talking about Herman Kelly and the Irish Freedom Party as a response on Twitter to actually denouncing and talking about the Irish Freedom Party to members of his mosque in Blanchardstown. Wow, that's a real upgrade where he's telling his Islamic followers to research the Irish Freedom Party and it's called Irish Freedom Party. Irish Freedom Party, go look it up on Google. They have throughout Ireland candidates. They even have a candidate in Ongar area. They have candidates throughout Ireland. What is their politics? Go to the page. Their page is full of anti-Muslim propaganda, anti-Islam propaganda. In in his video he did on Twitter, he claims that oh Herman Kelly knows nothing about, uh, he's never studied uh, theology. You know. Now, of course, this particular individual has never actually studied theology. He hasn't studied Christian theology, let alone Islamic theology. If he had studied theology, he would have known that scholars of scripture, scholars of the Quran, scholars of the Bible, scholars, scholars of the New Testament, of the Old Testament, all approach scripture in a way where they apply certain hermeneutics, certain principles. Actually, that isn't true at all. Umar Quadri realizes he's either very ignorant or he's lying. It looks like he's told so many untruths about Hamas, about his wallet being stolen, about myself personally, about actually Herman Kelly. I have a licentiate. I can lecture in theology in Catholic institutions and universities. There's my a licentiate in theology. I studied for two years, a bachelor's, and then another two years to do a license. So I'm qualified to lecture in theology at Catholic University. Uh, what he said was completely and utterly untrue. But let's get into the substance of what he talks about. Within the Quran, there are demands that Muslims are violent, that they behead, that they kill, that they push terror into the hearts of non-believers. It's throughout the Quran. He says, oh, but there's other verses, yes, he references earlier verses in the Quran before the Battle of Idur. There is in Islam, and I am certain that, doc, that Mr. Al Qadri knows this, there's a doctrine of abrogation that those peaceful verses, earlier verses, uh, which talk about tolerance, which talk about mercy, which talk about uh, kindness to others, they are all wiped out or abrogated by the later verses of the Quran which demand that adherence to Islam uh, kill non-believers, strike terror into their hearts, etc. He says, I insist that uh, everything is to be taken literally. No, the problem is, is the Muslims who take the Quran literally and carry out its commands, ISIS take the Quran literally. Saudi Arabia takes the Quran literally. Many of these countries with Sharia law their problem is, is they take the Quran literally. And so when you see non-believers being beheaded, when you see people who have rejected Islam being beheaded, 
Uh, they are people who take the Quran literally. They do what it says on the tin. For example, in Ireland, we've had uh, Yusuf, was it Palini, in uh, a Kurdish Muslim who came to Ireland when he was quite young, practicing Muslim. He beheaded, he decapitated and castrated two gay men in Sligo two years ago. He also turned up after these murders in the mosque of Mr. al Quadri. There is, in the Quran, there is the doctrine about one, uh, the command to kill, behead, and terrorize non-believers throughout the Quran. This is carried out literally by uh, states like Saudi Arabia, by ISIS, by Al-Qaeda, etc., etc. On the matter of apostasy, the penalty under Sharia law of that apostates, those who have rejected the Muslim faith, must be beheaded, must be killed. That is mentioned four times in the Hadith of Islam, and it is accepted as Sharia law across numerous uh, Islamic states. So it is part of the, the Islam, the legal demand under Sharia law that those who reject the faith must be killed. That is part of Islam. And if he says otherwise, he is lying. Secondly, I mentioned the issue of Aisha. It's not in the Quran. It is in the Hadith, the stories about Muhammad's life. And it's very clear that Muhammad, as a 53-year-old man, married a girl called Aisha and had sex with her when she was nine years of age. That's in black and white in the Hadith where they learn about the life of Muhammad. And that is the reason today that in many Islamic countries that old men are allowed to marry and have sexual intercourse with girls of nine. Now, for me and everybody else in the West, this is the living definition of pedophilia and child abuse, that a child who cannot give, the, who cannot give consent at the age of nine, that is rape of a minor, and it's an act of pedophilia. But for them, Muhammad, as the perfect man, that's what he did, and it's in black and white in the Hadith. And, any, and they call him, Muslims call Muhammad, the perfect man. And that is the reason why uh, in Islamic countries, this practice still pertains to this day. I don't see budding Buddhists, and Methodists, and all these different people going around. I don't see Buddhists going around with suicide vests. I don't see Methodists and uh, going around with uh, bombing missions, flying planes into buildings. Uh, violence is clearly, if you look up the website political, politicalislam.com, you can see the history of Islam and the history of uh, these Islamic crusades and the, uh, the expansion and the will in Islam to first to dominate, to subjugate uh, non-believers and when possible to annihilate non-believers. That is throughout the history of Islam. It's not in particular to any culture, any time. No, that's what Islam says on the tin. Then, so if he wants to reject these texts within either the Quran or in the Hadith and repudiate these calls to violence to behead non-believers, to repudiate the doctrine in Sharia law and in Islam that apostates will be killed and repudiate the practice in Islam of older men marrying young girls of nine and having sexual intercourse with young girls of nine. If he, do, I will be happy to talk and discuss how uh, the, the, the history of Islam. And do you know what? I have studied uh, Islam quite a bit. So I do know what I'm talking about in regards to text. And I also know two people who have both been uh, shot at by Islamic terrorists in the last number of years. One outside the Bataclan, another uh, a, a Polish woman. So I know two people. So the idea that Islamic violence is at a distant in, in time or in place is untrue. Islamic violence, we are idiots for allowing a strong Islamic presence in Europe. It is like bringing a snake into the house and really we should not allow this ideology of uh, Islam into Europe. It's very, very dangerous. And we talk about that plainly. So Mr. al Qadri talks about the growth of the PVV or the Freedom Party in the Netherlands and he's noticed that the Irish Freedom Party as a coherent and uh, principled nationalist party are, are growing. We're putting candidates forward 
Uh, it's not just to do with uh, immigration. It's to do with we want free people and a free country. Uh, all we want is what a normal country wants is where I, we believe that Irish people are good enough to make our own laws for our own benefit, control our own borders and, and our own budgets. All we are doing is looking to be a normal country and to be a secure country. We don't want a lot of unvetted men coming in the country, nor do we want followers of a violent ideology such as Islam in the country. Hey, it just makes good sense. History has happened. We should learn from it. And to ignore uh, the history of Islam with, and its con when it comes into contact with other cultures of the world is extremely naive. And you know what? We're not naive. Mr. Quadri is an intelligent guy. He's playing a long-term game, but it's okay. We see you. And you know what? Over in your videos you've done recently and your actions about changing your story, every, every step of the way, changing your story, it, you know, contradicting yourselves time after time is not the actions of an honest man. So, but you can make things better by, by repudiating those things that I've, those three things that I've mentioned. And then we can talk honestly rather than any type of lies. So my name is Herman Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party, Coromagatan.